Good morning, everyone. Welcome. For those of you that I haven't had the pleasure of meeting yet, I am State Librarian Mary Susie, and I have the honor of kicking off R&D this morning. Um, I've been doing that now the last, gosh, four or five years, I think. Um, normally, in, in the before times, as we like to call them, uh, I would do the morning keynote, and we'd be all over the board, and we'd have a lot of fun and laughter and all that good stuff. Um, and my PowerPoint would maybe make sense and pertain to what I was talking about, or it might have a picture where everybody in the audience would be like, okay, where are we going with this? Uh, so shockingly, my PowerPoint today is completely on the topic and more words than pictures, which some of you who have seen my presentations in recent years knows that's a little bit unusual. So I do have time built in at the end, you'll see from the agenda for kind of an open forum. Um, but if you have questions as I go along through my presentation, please feel free to jump in. Uh, feel free to unmute yourself to ask a question or post it in chat. And as you saw, Sherry will send up some sort of a signal to get my attention. So here is the agenda for today. Uh, the State Library has is in the process of adopting a new strategic plan. And there's some things about the plan that I'm excited to share with the library community. We are gonna talk about the Library Services and Technology Act Task Force that we are forming. And under that, we're gonna talk about the American Rescue Plan Act funds and our five-year evaluation and plan. And then kind of an open forum, chat about what you guys want to talk about if you have any questions for me. So kind of mimicking a little bit what we do when we are at r and in person. So as I mentioned, the State Library is working on a new strategic plan. Um, we're taking a very different tact to the plan this year than we did with our last plan. Uh, we are working with Jason Matthews from Jam Strategy. Some of you may know Jason from previous work he's done with the State Library, or he also works with NDLA as their legislative consultant. And then he also is a citizen at large on the North Dakota Library Coordinating Council. So he's really familiar with the State Library in particular and with general North Dakota Library land. So we are happy to be working with Jason once again. So the State Library has a new mission statement, drum roll please. This is the public unveiling of our new mission statement, although it has been in my email uh, SIG file hit or miss before this, so you may have seen it already. Um, you may also recognize it. this was actually our former vision statement. So our new mission statement is providing pathways to information and innovation for North Dakota's library, state government and residents. We have opted not to adopt a new vision statement. Uh, rather, we have adopted some guiding principles and we felt like the mission statement really was enough to uh, take us in the direction that we want to go. Our previous mission statement was a series of, it was just three phrases. It was um, um, strengthening community, communities, enriching lives, and my brain just completely fritzed out on the third, which was really the first phrase. Um, anyway, when we did our focus group with our staff, one thing that became really clear is that mission statement was not concrete enough for our staff to, to know what direction we were going in and, and really what our goals and our values and our missions were. And so we wanted to adopt a mission statement that made it really clear because we felt like if some of our staff weren't clear then there were probably members of the library community that weren't clear. So hopefully this makes it really straightforward. The state library provides pathways to information and innovation. And so along with that, we have adopted some new um, guiding principles. In our former plan, we called these values, but we really wanted to kind of elevate it to a, a little bit higher level than values. So as North Dakota State Library, we strive to provide leadership to the library community, to enhance the value of libraries, to deliver access to and assistance with credible information sources, enrich the lives of the people we serve, and foster a welcoming and inclusive environment for all. 
it was really important to us that our guiding principles spoke to the three constituency groups that we just mentioned in our mission statement, namely library community, North Dakota state government, and then residents of North Dakota. And so we really hope that what we do provides leadership to the library community, as well as enhances the value of libraries at the local state regional and national levels. I always say one of the most important parts of my job is to advocate for libraries at all those local, state, regional, uh, national level. And so we're hoping that the work that we do helps you enhance the value to your communities as well. We also thought in 2021, it's really important for all libraries to help combat the fake news that's out there, but also to highlight the skill set that we as librarians bring to the table. And one of those skill sets is helping with research uh, and helping, helping our patrons, for us, libraries, state government, and then residents, really find sources that are good, solid sources it's another way also to highlight the databases that we provide. Uh, we hope that everything we does enrich the lives of the people we serve. And this is about customer service. We hope that every time you interact with us, you are receiving great service. And we hope if you're not, that you'll let us know. Um, but it's, it's also about the resources that we provide. It's about the services we offer, it's about the collection materials that we provide, the databases, it's about the flicker tail and the newsletter. And so we're hoping that all of those different facets of what we do enrich the lives of those that we serve. And then foster a welcoming and inclusive environment for all. We all know that since last year's social unrest, you know, our, our country's been through a lot in the last year, whether it's the pandemic and the results of the pandemic or the social unrest. Um, it, it's really important right now that we focus on equity, diversity and inclusion. And um, NDLA to that point has appointed a committee that is working on EDI for NDLA and Car our Carmen Redding from our staff is leading that committee. Uh, one of the things that they are working on is a definition of what equity, diversity, and inclusion means for NDLA so that we all kind of have common language. And so the State Library really wanted to make sure that was part of the principles that we adopted, both as uh, to serve as a resource for the library community, but also to serve as a resource for other state government agencies. Uh, Brianne Meyer from our staff, a lot of you probably know Brianne, she's our marketing specialist. Brianne and I serve on the state's IDEA committee, which stands for, and I'm, I'm going to forget the A, I always forget one of the A's, inclusion, diversity, equity, access, and action. Woo, I got it, access, I always forget access. So yay me. Um, so Brianne and I are, are serving on the IDEA committee, and uh, we just felt that, you know, in that role, there's a couple of us serving on NDLA's EDI committee, as well as the conversations we've had within the state library, that we really wanted to make sure that one of our guiding principles got at being inclusive, as well as welcoming. And again, that's not just in our physical space, but in our website, in our collections, in programs and services that we offer. So we've also adopted a set of institution goals, uh, expand statewide outreach opportunities, promote the value of North Dakota libraries. You'll see that as a recurring theme. Maintain and promote awareness of technologies for libraries and patrons. Advocate for and administer grant opportunities for libraries. Curate a well-developed collection that advance, advances our mission and is consistent with not only our guiding principles, but also our legislative intent, and then serve as one of the primary information resources for state government. And we're continuing to work through this process. Um, and so these may get tweaked, you know, in six months or a year when we start to really live with our plan once it's adopted. But for now, those are our agency level goals. We wanted to make sure on the technology one that we didn't just talk about emerging technologies, 
but that we also continued to provide assistance and awareness of existing technologies, either that libraries may be aware of but aren't sure how to access or that patrons may be struggling with. Those of us who work the reference desk know uh, since December 15th-ish, <laughs> was that the date, Sherry, where we went live in, with OverDrive? And then again, at the end of February, end of March, when our uh, access to RB Digital completely um, went away. And so we wanted to make sure that we could provide assistance for patrons as well as for libraries. But so if you weren't aware that this was something the State Library did, you know, if you're having problems, whatever library type you are with a technology in your building, and you just can't figure out how to jumpstart it, you can contact um, Ryan and Cindy Olson in our IT department for assistance with technology. If you're looking to buy a new receipt printer or a barcode scanner, or if you're looking to get into digitization and you need help figuring out what kind of scanner you should buy for that, you can reach out to our digitization specialist, Trevor Martinson. And so we didn't want to put just emerging technologies because there's existing technologies that we all need help with. Um, and so we, we tried to be really thoughtful in these agency level goals. And then the next step was our OKRs. And this is the part that's really brand new for us. Um, as some of you, maybe all of you are aware, the State Library underwent a pretty major organizational change last year. And we now have four divisions in the State Library. And so um, each of our divisions worked together as a whole to develop what's called OKRs, Objectives and Key Results. And so that's the part that we're at right now. Our um, ELT, our executive leadership team, which is made up of the four division directors and myself, reviewed the OKRs last week from the divisions. And now uh, we are going to start the, this is a very technical term. Tracy, don't laugh too hard at me when you hear it. It's very, very technical. We are going to start the smushing process where we start smushing together similar OKRs. And we're going to have agency level OKRs, the ones that multiple divisions will work on, and then we're gonna have division level OKRs as well. So that's that's really exciting. And I'm, I'm, I can't wait to share the full plan um, with the library community once we get there. And now that I uh, am on, you know, this far in my presentation, I grabbed my notes to make sure I covered everything I wanted to chat about. So um, once we have finished our strategic plan, then the next step, and we're gonna talk about this in a minute, is to work on our LSTA evaluation and five-year plan. And the strategic plan is really our internal guiding document. It works in conjunction with our LSTA, Library Services Technology Act five-year plan, as well as the library vision document that is adopted by the North Dakota Library Coordinating Council. NDLCC is our guideline for how we administer library vision grants, um, which is actually something that is assigned to us in Century Code. And then the um, LSCA plan got, are the guidelines for how we expend our federal funds, or our LSTA funds. And so these plans all live separately, but they work in conjunction with one another. So before I jump into the LSTA stuff, are there any questions, comments, thoughts on our new mission statement, our guiding principles, or the goals? It seems that smooshing is a favorite term. Excellent. I, I love when I can throw out terms that people like. Thanks, Sherry. Uh, any other comments, thoughts, questions? Uh, one question I have for you is, does the mission statement, if I back up, does that mission statement spell out more clearly what the goals, you know, what the State Library is all about? Hearing no no's, I'm going to go with yes, it does, Barry. Thanks for that feedback. 
So the next thing we really wanted to make sure that we talked about today is the Library Services and Technology Act Task Force. So Library Services and Technology Act, you'll often hear us refer to that as LSTA. Those are the federal funds that the State Library gets from the Institute for Museum and Library Services or IMLS. Every five years, we go through a process where we evaluate the existing plan and then we write a new pl plan. Every four and a half years, because it's a five-year plan, you have to evaluate it before the end of the current plan so you can then write and adopt the new plan. We submit those to IMLS and then they approve them. We get guidelines from IMLS. Again, that's the Institute for Museum and Library Services. We get guidelines from IMLS on the priorities that have to be addressed within the plan. And then we write our plan using those guidelines. And so um, we've done this different ways, but usually we hold convenings across the state. Um, the, the last time we did the convenings would have been uh, shortly after I started. And, um, that, and then we use the information that we get from the convenings to create the plan. And then we use the North Dakota Library Coordinating Council, which is our advisory board that's appointed by the governor and has representatives from all the different types of libraries, as well as two citizen at large positions, um, serves as a sounding board and they serve as one of our focus groups as well. And the last time we did it, we had a focus group at NDLA uh, which was really great. We got a lot of feedback. The reason I loved the NDLA one in particular was we had a lot of frontline staff that came to that. And typically in some of our other convenings, we mostly get the library directors. We've had a couple of trustees. We've had some school librarians, some academic librarians. Um, but by and large, it's the public library community that has turned out for those. So this, this time around, we're gonna take a little bit different tact. Uh, we are going to have an NDLA a session at the NDLA conference committee. I have an in with Tracy and she said yes. So yay. Um, and we love again that opportunity, but we really want to get representation from as broadly across the library field as we can. And so a lot of our convenings this year are going to happen online. We are we tried that last time. We did two Zoom focus groups. One had one or two people and the other one had no one. But that was five years ago. It was a different world and we weren't all as comfortable and used to Zoom as we are now. And of course, we don't know at what point where people are going to feel comfortable coming together in person again. So the other benefit though of, of Zoom meetings is that it really gives more than just the library director, hopefully the opportunity to you know drop in and give us comments. Um, so, we are and we are still in the process of formulating our plan. Um, we're actually still in the process of signing our contract as well. But we are our plan. Our intention is to work with JM Strategies. Um, Jason did our last evaluation and plan, so he's very familiar with it. And having just gone through the strategic plan with us, as well as familiar familiarity, that's a tough word to say, with NDLA, we feel that he'll be able to really you know, dig in very, uh, very deeply with this process. And so um, we, we've just begun very basic conversations with him. And one of the things that we plan to do is a comprehensive survey of the North Dakota Library community, both for the evaluation and then a second survey for when we get to the plan writing stage. We're hoping that will get us broader as well. Now that we have uh, someone on staff who is focused on academic, special, and tribal libraries. That's James Murphy, who's on the uh, in the meeting today. If you haven't had a chance to meet James yet, send him a, a hi. Um, and then we have, of course, Abby Ebach is our public library specialist. Sherry is our literacy specialist. And then hopefully we're waiting for the budget process to finish. We're hoping to hire a school library specialist soon. Um, in addition to the general convenings, we do plan to do targeted by library type also. So we're really hoping we'll get broader feedback that way. But so between doing general uh, focused and then the survey, 
we're really hoping that we're going to get more robust and more people involved in the process. That's a really long feed into our ask. <laughs> so we sent an email out last week and then we did an article for the Flickr tale about this task force that we're creating. And our goal for the task force is twofold. One is to help us develop a plan for our ARPA funds. I'm gonna to get to that in a minute. And then the other is to help us with the plan and the evaluation. And so right now we have volunteers from the North Dakota Library Coordinating Council, we have an academic and a public library. We do have, I'm gonna say an unofficial appointee from NDLA because I'm not sure if that's been made official or not. Um, we, Ellen uh, Katerbaugh from Odin has accepted the invitation to, to for the Odin seat. And then we're, we're looking for representation from across the library community. So we have volunteers from uh, small and large public libraries. We have volunteers from a special library. Um, we do have a volunteer from an academic library who is on our coordinating council. We're hoping to get another academic librarian, at least one more. And then we don't currently have anyone from the school or tribal library communities. So we're hoping we'll receive those volunteers also. It is not going to be very onerous. We're asking for two meetings through hopefully the end of June of this year. And then July through June of next year, we're asking for one meeting a month. And then there'll be some in-between work, but our goal is really to not make it onerous. Um, but we really do wanna get feedback from the library community. So the first goal of the task force is going to be to help us create our American Rescue Plan Act plan. It's weird to say plan, act, plan. ARPA, or you may hear it referred as ARP or ARP, uh, was, was the third stimulus package that was passed by Congress. The state library just received our award letter last week, hot off the presses. We'll be receiving just over $2.1 million to be spent between now and September 30th of 2022. Now, to put that in perspective for you guys, our normal award from IMLS is $900,000 a year. We're getting an extra $100,000 starting with the next federal fiscal year. So normally in a year, our award is a million dollars. We're getting an extra $2.1 million to spend in the next 18 months. There are uh, tight areas of focus as um, from IMLS, support for digital inclusion efforts, particularly in support of education, health and workforce development rapid emergency relief to libraries, allowing them to respond to the pandemic and implement public health protocols, support for library services. The bulk of our money should be spent on one and two. That I had another ARPA slide there. Did I Mary? That? Yeah. Can I ask a question? Yeah. The areas of focus, mm -hmm. were those, um, put to them by you? Were those given to you by them? Or where did those areas of focus come from? Th that's a great question, Lynette. No, those were those were given to us from IMLS. Yep. That's a great question. So we do have ideas. I just realized what happened. I worked on this last night. And when I opened the version, it didn't include the extra slides I put in last night or my notes. So um, we do have some ideas for how the money could be spent. And we will propose those to the task force as a starting conversation. But we really do wanna get feedback from the task force. Um, we will have final, the state librarian has final say, but we really wanna get a lot of feedback on this from the those who serve on our task force. So some of the areas, um, subgrants, are not off the table. Uh, Subgrants are an option, but uh, I will say subgrants are a lot of work, both for the state library as well as for the grant recipients. It would be more work than than when you if you receive a library vision grant, which are state funded dollars. Um, because there's more requirements for us from the federal than there is from the state. And because we don't have a subgrant program in place, getting that developed would be a lot. 
it's not off the table. We are totally going to have that conversation with the task force. We, we do have in mind some formula grants, however, which are less onerous on us and less onerous on the libraries. A formula grant means um, basically we have, we have a formula we create, you have to meet the formula, and there's a narrower scope of how those dollars can be spent. So for instance, one of the, the formula grants that we have talked about internally would be for uh, libraries that are doing outreach, whether that outreach is through a bookmobile, a mobile library, a bike library, a kiosk, there may be other kinds of things out there in the library community that we're not aware of. Those are the ones we're aware of from the public library uh, annual report that we get every year, but there may be other outreach that our schools or our academics are doing um, you know, that would qualify. So that's one formula grant. Um, and, and the formula part would come in like bookmobiles receive X, you know, mobile libraries receive X, et, et cetera. Um, we, I have had a conversation with Ellen from Odin. And one of the things that Odin wants to explore anyway is a product called Share It. It's a, in essence, uh, and, and I'm gonna ask Sherry to jump in if I, if you, if you need to expand a little bit or explain better, Sherry, but basically Share It is a ILL bridge. It would connect Odin and Odin now has two systems under its umbrella. So there's the, the PK-12, PK special, and then there's the academic. So um, public library, K-12 education and special libraries use one software, Polaris, and then our academic libraries use another software, Alma. Share it would connect those two, but beyond connecting those two, Share it would also connect like CDLN or the Minot Consortium, or we're hoping school libraries, uh, if a library is a standalone, say on Atrium, it would connect that so that there's an easier way to search each other's collection and request materials. Another option we're talking about that uh, is postage grants for resource sharing. So if you participate in interlibrary loan and you send materials across the state, we would reimburse you your postage costs. So those are some of the things we're looking at. Another option would be supporting collection development of eBooks within the Library to Go Consortium and then within the School Library Consortium. I'm not aware of an, of an eDrive consortium at the academic level, but if there is a similar vehicle, you know, we would explore that as well. Another option when Ellen and I, Ellen from Odin and I were talking, I would love to see some of our non-automated libraries in particular get automated. So we may have grants where we would pay the, um, the migration costs the, the startup costs, if you will, to join Odin, and then libraries would have to pay their ongoing costs. So those are the kind of the high level things that we're thinking of at this time. We're hoping the task force members will have other ideas to bring forth or will have feedback for us on those different ideas. Um, if anybody here has feedback on any of those ideas, I would love to hear it. I am used to much more interacting during my presentations at R&D. That's the downside to the virtual. Um, so that's kind of ARPA in a nutshell. I'm, I'm kind of keeping an eye on the time here. Then the other arm of the LSTA, LSTA task force, as I said, is evaluating our current five-year plan and then creating a new plan. You can see a copy of the evaluation of our last year's plan on our our website and I put the link there. And then our current plan is also available on the website and you can see that's from 18 to 22. Um, and so we'll have those focus groups that I talked about in August and September. And then 
the group will really get to work on helping us to develop the new plan. And along with that, what we'll do is we'll work with Jason to take the, the feedback from the evaluation focus groups. Um, part of that feedback will be what the, the library community wants to see the state library focus on in our next five years with our federal funding. And then um, the, the two surveys that we're gonna send out. So that is the focus plan, that, or that is that part of the, of the task force. Um, again, I just wanna really stress, we would really, really like broad participation from the North Dakota library community as we work on these. We want participation from all library types and from across the organizations. So, you know, if, if you work in a one or two person library, it's probably gonna be the director, right? But if you're in a larger library, we're hoping that not only the director will participate, but frontline staff will participate. Other professional librarians will give us feedback. Um, the survey will not be a one per library. It'll be anyone that wants to participate in the surveys to give feedback. And so, um, So we're kind of at the part of the open forum. Um, I'll go to my last slide just because that shows my contact info if anyone should want it. I started to put my Twitter handle on this slide and then realized that's silly because I'm really not good at checking Twitter, but uh, I'm gonna stop sharing now so I can see everybody's face. So we have 20 minutes left uh, in this time here. And I, I really, one of the things that is really beneficial when I do the, the R&D uh, keynote every year is kind of that organic conversation that happens. Um, now, some of you have been on the library community meetings know from, from my hosting them, if you all don't start to participate, I will continue to talk and you never know what direction that conversation is gonna go in. James, I can see everybody's face right now. Just so you know, you might wanna modify that. I saw your eyebrows go up there, so just joking. Um, but anyway, so this is really your opportunity. I, we could have called this session, Ask the State Librarian. If you had burning questions you've been waiting to ask me, if you have suggestions on our plan, um, if, if you hate the new mission statement, be gentle when you share that hatred. My feelings are very delicate. Uh, but really, this is really, again, an open forum for you guys. And if you don't jump in and start some conversation, I'll keep talking. And uh, as those of you who've been on the library community meetings know that can take off in a really weird direction. So with that, I'll jump in. Uh, but I did want to plug, um, Mary is talking about the library community meetings um, that are every two weeks, one Thursday, one Tuesday, I can't remember which, just in my calendar, but um, you guys, they are so, they're a breath of fresh air, there's not much of an agenda, we just kind of talk, it's a great way to communicate, um, so I do, um, I don't have anything to do with them besides I join, but I just want to throw a plug out there. Um, Paul and I, I think you and I have attended almost every one. I think we deserve like an award or something, Paul. <laughs> but she's right. She will keep talking. So I suggest some more questions. <laughs> uh, those are the first Tuesday at 2 and the third Thursday at 11. Carrie I, used to come, but we haven't seen her in a while. And Rita came has come sometimes. Yeah, I try I to. Um, it, 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 I always have good intentions of getting there, and then so, there will be something else that comes up, etc. But it is on yeah, my calendar. Life, life happens, especially these days, for sure, Rita. So I will just say I do like your new mission statement. I was. Um, having trouble figuring out how to unmute and then it was past the moment at, at comment time, but you did say no one had commented and I wanted to throw that in there for you. Thanks Rita, I appreciate that. Well, we worked really hard. The, the feedback from our staff group was really, really beneficial um, in helping us you know, kind of develop this. Um, one of the conversations that we had, and it again, it happened sort of organically, uh, one of the confusions I think for, for staff is 
what exactly is the role of the state libraries? We sort of function as a public library. We're not really a public library. And so I asked that question of our executive leadership team. We, we, um, we had some conversation and then we, we actually took time out and reflected on that question are you know are we a public library and if we are what does it mean and if we're not what does it mean and then we came back and and we're not a public library and so we have made the decision that we are not going to serve as a de facto public library now outwardly that doesn't necessarily mean a, a lot to you guys although again one of our guiding principles and one of our agency goals is to add value to to libraries and so that means helping you promote your services. We are still going to have interlibrary loan. We are still going to, you know, if someone walks in the building, we're not going to say, get out and go to your local library. You know, that's not what we're going to do. But we're talking about who gets a library card from the state library. You know, if, if they're in a, a community like Dickinson that has a, a local public library that can serve their needs, and Dickinson may need assistance with interlibrary loan or something like that, you know, versus someone who lives in a community that has no public library or has an underserved public library, meaning they're open less hours maybe, or they haven't joined the overdrive consortium or things like that. And so we're working out those details internally. Um, we have defined unserved, underserved, and sort of what it means to be or not be a de facto public library, but we're still working through that in the details. Um, one of the things we're looking at with that is our collection. Um, you know, do we continue to have bestsellers or not? And we're and the executive leadership team is leading towards not, but you know, that um, we, we are looking at doing a revision of our collection development policy. Uh, and this is, some of you will think this is weird, those of you who are stuck writing policies, but I love to write policies and I don't get a lot of chance to write policies. So I'm kind of excited to write a new collection development policy. Um, and then, with, oh with, yeah, would Rita. You volunteer to help with those of us who are working on a couple of big policy things? Yeah, sure. All um, right, you'll hear from it, me. And I get to do the fun part. I get to write the policy and then I get to hand it off to Sherry and she gets to write the procedures, uh, which then I just have to go check or hmm, wordsmith a little bit. So um, so I'm really, really excited about this process. It's kind of the next step in that reorg that we started last year and, you know, starting a major reorganization uh, and then the next month going into a pandemic where, you know, half of your staff goes remote and you don't really have a chance to really flush out what the new positions look like. And so for some of our staff, it's been a hard year, not just because of the pandemic, but because they're in new positions that we didn't get the chance to fully flush out. So we're working through that as well. Um, and then, you know, we were able to create a brand new position, which uh, we're thrilled to have James in, which is our, it's a mouthful and we have to figure out a shorter title, but that's probably not going to happen. Um, academic special and tribal library specialist. And this is really the first time that we've had someone dedicated to those library types. You know, we've had public library specialists, we had a school library specialist, but we haven't had anyone dedicated to academic special and tribal libraries. And so we're really excited to, you know, develop that position and grow that position as well. Mary, I have a question. Yes, Bonnie. You said you were possibly going to stop buying bestsellers. I can understand that because we can get those from other libraries. But the large print collection that services the blind and sight impaired, will you mm -hmm. put back on that collection as well? Uh, that We have not had any conversations in that direction, Bonnie. Um, the Talking Books program is one of our key services and we do not see impacting that other than looking at ways to potentially expand it to do additional outreach things like that um, we are talking about whether or not we continue what we call our large print pulls you know where a library emails us and says i want 10 large print books i'd like three mysteries two romances a suspense whatever that adds up to and the rest is just general titles, you know, and, and so if we continue that, what does that program look like, but we are not talking about stopping our large print collection. Okay, 
Because Great I know question. that's one that, that I've used in the past extensively when I've had some sight impaired people that are going, you don't have anything new on your shelf. Mm -hmm. Sure. Large and that's, are that's that are real expensive. Yes, that's good feedback for us to have, Bonnie. And, you know, if, if your library uses the large print pulls or if you weren't aware that we had that service and now you heard about it and you're like, ooh, we're going to start using that service, you know, reach out and let Sherry know or me. Okay. Uh, we used to use it. I haven't used it in the last couple of years, but we used to use it extensively for, we had like five men that all they wanted to read was Western. Mm. So I was, you know, once a month saying, Please send me 10 new Westerns. Yep. And the state was very good about not sending me ones we'd already had. Yeah. Well, and I, I don't know that we're good at that now because we have changed our model for the reference desk. We do, we no longer have one dedicated person at the reference desk. We have um, all of our professional librarians, including myself, take time on the reference desk and, or have time on the reference desk. And so whoever works the desk that day does the pull, but that's good feedback uh, for us to take back to our division director staff to say, is there some procedures we need to put in place so we're tracking the books that we pulled? Because I'll be honest, I did my first large print pull a couple of weeks ago. I've done two in the last two months and I didn't track the titles we sent because that didn't even honestly occur to me. And it probably should have with all the years I was a public library director. So uh, that's Sherry, would you make note to follow up on that with staff for me? So, Thank you, Mary. Can I jump in here a minute? We yeah. are not, I'm not saying we could do what the state library does. We could not, but if you want to search our catalog and put holes on our materials, we have a lot of large print and we are happy to share. Awesome. That's great. Thanks, Rita. Other questions that you have either on what I presented or topics you wanted to bring up? There's also a small lull, so I'm gonna jump in right now. Kirsten Pearson doesn't have a microphone and she wanted to have something to note about the smaller libraries being automated that an ongoing scholarship sponsorship might be a good idea because their budget might not allow for continued participation. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a great, great comment, Kristen. Thank you, or Kirsten, sorry, thank you. And Ellen and I had some conversation about that as well. And we have some ideas on that. Um, Odin is looking at the formula we're talking about. Is there kind of a, if your library is under a certain population, similar to what happened for those of you who are involved in the, library to go consortium. When the state library joined and began having conversations with Overdrive, Overdrive looked at the formula and was like, hmm, this formula for small libraries is really high. And they redid the formula and it impacted most of the libraries positively. And so um, we're looking at, is there a way to do something similar with Odin? But we, you know, we don't know. We're looking at, is there a way that we could do some ongoing support with LSTA dollars that the state library has? You know, so that'll be part of the conversation, not only with our ARPA funds, but also our LSTA plan. Mary, is there a great advantage to the library being part of Odin versus like we are, we have our atrium? Mm -hmm. I, I think you'd get a different answer depending on who you ask, but you asked me. So I will say, I think the advantage is access to a much wider array of materials easier, uh, not only for library staff, but for your patrons. You know, they can place holds, um, and, and I'll let uh, maybe one of our public libraries that is in Odin address that. Um, Rita and Tracy, maybe, I know you guys are both Odin libraries, but I think being part of consortium, uh, there, there is a greater cost. I don't know that there's a greater cost to be part of Odin because you're already paying for Atrium. Um, but I think the benefit comes in is just greater access to resources as well as the larger benefit that comes from scale of economies. You know, the more libraries they're sharing in the cost, 
the more economical it is for everyone to participate. Well, I know back when we automated, we looked at the cost and the quotes that we were given from Odin were, they were just well beyond our budget. It would have taken my whole book budget to fund it for the year. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I will say that um, Odin is in a different place than it was four years ago, five years ago. Uh, yes. The current executive director, Ellen, has worked really hard on transparency and on creating a formula that makes sense for libraries of all sizes. Um, many of the libraries actually saw a decrease in their costs. Um, the state libraries went up. We were okay with that. Some of our larger libraries may have gone up a little bit, but a lot of our libraries, the costs went down. Um, and that's not just because we went to Polaris, but it's because we're working from a formula that a lot of time and thought went into developing. So this okay. is Rita, I will jump in with one other big benefit and that's the Odin staff. Um, you, you having issues at all, they are so knowledgeable and so quick to respond. Uh, there's no overstating the value of it. The Odin staff is like, having a whole bunch of more uh, librarians on your staff in many ways. And they are awesome. That's also, a great point. Also the cost, once again, we are on a different system now. It is organized differently. If you are at the point where you're considering, it'd sure be worth taking a look at at least. And you have the help of everybody else in the consortium with the work groups. So if you're having a problem or you for training, anything like that, uh, there's just so much more available to you as part of the group. And, uh, Rita took the words right out of my mouth. I was going to say the same thing. There's something to be said about Odin themselves and the workforce and the work that they do at the library. And I Did Tracy freeze for everyone or just me? For everyone. everyone. Okay. Tracy, you froze there a little bit. And the expression was priceless where you froze. Yeah, you were like this. <laughs> it's not unusual for her. No. Yeah. I will add to that. Um, you know, I'm not familiar with Atrium Bonnie, so I've never used it. So I don't know how easy or simple it is to use. But if you have questions, uh, on the cat, you know, on the software itself, you you have the Odin as a resource. Um, I don't know how you catalog, but in Polaris, my understanding is it's really easy for libraries to do that do primarily copy cataloging to just attach to a record because chances are one of the bigger libraries has already bought it, even if it's a new book. The other benefit and um, this may or may not seem like a benefit to you. When I started, I came from a system where every year at the end of our fiscal year, three days later, this stack of reports, you know, showed up on my desk for the annual report. And I didn't have, it was, I didn't have to think I had to start plugging it in. And so when I started here, I was like, well, we're in a consortium. Why isn't Odin doing that? And so Ellen said, oh, I don't know. And so every year for the annual report, Odin runs a series of reports to assist with filling out the annual report. To me, that's a huge benefit. I see Rita and Tracy shaking their head. Yes, that it's a benefit, you know, to have someone put those reports together for you that you don't have to run yourself. So right now we use the state cataloging. Stacy used to do our cataloging for us. Mm, gotcha. So yep. So we, we are paying extra to have that done mm -hmm. and stuff. Right, because you pay for those CLC records. Yep. Right. So, okay, I was, yeah, I was just kind of curious and thought, well, maybe this is something I want to look at before I leave. Sure. It, it might be worth it to reach out to Ellen and just get a quote. It may be more economical than you think. I will do that. Great question. Other questions or comments or topics that you wanted to discuss? I have a comment. I just really, Mary, 
with the reorg of the state library and everything that you guys are doing, it's really, it's awesome. Like you're not staying a stagnant state library. The value of having you and your team at the state library is just awesome. It's, I just, I love it. Like every time just, okay, we're gonna reorganize. This is, let's try it. Like I just, I love that go-getter attitude and the things that you guys are doing at your level because it makes then me at my level go, well, they can do it, I can do it. So it's kind of like that little kid that can go on the roller coaster. He can do it, I can do it. So so just, um, it's really awesome what you guys are doing. So keep it up. Thanks, Tracy, I appreciate that. And I'll throw out there for anybody else that might need to hear it. When we did our last um, reorganization and um, did a new mission statement and value statement and all of that. We did have um, a state library staff member that came out and facilitated those discussions, which was awesome because um, there was time I could go out of the room and people could talk with me not right there. And there was time that I could just be a member of the staff and be participating in a different way. So um, if you haven't taken advantage of what the state library offers in those ways, uh, you won't be sorry if you do. Awesome. Thanks for that uh, shameless plug. We will take it, Rita. Um, that is a service that the State Library can offer. I'm hoping, uh, you know, soon that we'll be able to start in-person visits again to libraries across the state as many more of our libraries have opened up. So I'll do a quick plug for our Librarian for a Day program. If, if I haven't visited your library yet, I would love to. I promise it is a no pressure not scary thing to have me come to your library. Uh, I come in, you, you put me to work, you ask me questions, we have a conversation. I've done everything from weeding to putting together summer reading decorations to conversations on collection development to board training, staff training. Uh, one, it, this, I just, this is such a fun one to tell. I was at a school library and it was an elementary school and it was the first graders were coming in. And so their uh, literary lesson that day was coloring. And so the, the librarian walked over and handed me a coloring sheet and crayons. And so I was sitting there coloring my picture and I took a, I took a picture and I sent a text to my boss, uh, State Superintendent Kirsten Basler and said, have I told you how much I love my job? And I was telling that story to another state librarian and they're like, wait, you, you were coloring a picture at work and you send it to your boss? And I said, yeah. And her response was, that's awesome. So, I mean, you know, it's, it, it's really a no pressure thing. We can talk about whatever topics that you have to talk about. The only real requirement, if you will, is that there has to be something library related during the day. So if you're doing a Friends of the Library event and you want me to come to that, I can do that. I've, I've sold cookies, I've served lunch. Um, at one library for they were having a their annual community event and that was what the library was doing they asked me to come in and participate so it really the day can be structured however you want and um, you know I would love to come out and visit you it's super easy to schedule me to come out and right now of course there's not a lot of traveling uh, in my world. And so it's a lot easier to schedule me to come out right now because most conferences are being held virtually. So Mary, careful. I might make you librarian of the day when they have a six hour commission meeting. And then well, you could go to the commission meeting for me. If that's what you really want, Carrie, but then you're, you have to live with the consequences of that decision. And I be might careful, be careful, Carrie. She went to counter commissioners for me. But that wasn't bad, Bonnie. You make that sound like a bad thing. No, it wasn't bad for me. I wasn't there. It wasn't bad for your commission either. I was just frank. Uh, but I've done that. I've done board training. Um, at Williston, I did a presentation on the role of the library director and the role of the board. So that was a thing. Um, I've done visioning with staff. Uh, I've done staff development where it's kind of a continuing education thing. So it's, again, it's really, really wide open. Um, and I would just love to come and visit your library. 
Mary, are you open to travel now? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. I will yep. be in touch. Yeah, we do like um, we are we do still have some COVID protocols in place. Ryan and Cindy Olson have been on the road working on the infrastructure technology grants, and we have put some COVID protocols in place for those visits. Um, so, you know, we would talk about what you're what what's going on locally. You know, do you want to mask that kind of a thing? So. Um, but yeah, Bonnie, please reach out. You know where to reach me. Well, everyone, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your interaction this morning. Um, it is 10.55. Our next session starts at 11. So you have about five minutes to run and fill your coffee if you need to use the restroom, get a little snack. Um, in the meantime, we will also be playing a short video from Bank of North Dakota about the summer reading program thing that we do with them. So thank you, everyone. Hey everyone, James Barnard here with Bank of North Dakota and the College Save Plan. I'm here once again to thank you for participating in our College Save Summer Reading Champions program. Our partnership with the North Dakota State Library and all of you out there has been an effective tool not only to incentivize everybody in your towns to hopefully participate in your summer reading programs, but we're building a huge amount of awareness about the state's college savings plan. And we thank you repeatedly for allowing us to be part of your program. Remember, College Save is the state's plan. It's an opportunity for families to save for future higher education expenses with a ton of incentives, tax deferred growth, in-state tax incentives, low contribution minimums, and the ability to qualify for up to three different match programs now. New baby match for newborns, B and D match, which is based on income for families, and the launch of our recent kindergarten kickoff match program just a few months ago, which is a $100 incentivized program for five and six years olds when they go into kindergarten. So hopefully what we're doing, what you're doing to build some awareness of the plan and make sure kids are reading as often as they possibly can um, is hopefully working on both of our accounts. So once again, thank you for participating. And the results have been pretty overwhelming. Thousands of families have redeemed their certificates. Remember, it's $25 into a new College Save account when they complete your summer reading program and $10 into an existing account. So kids that are participating in your programs year after year after year can continue to get that $10 um, into their College Save account. Remember, a College Save account does have to be opened for those redeemable certificates. And we're also doing the $10,529 big awards for everybody randomly being drawn according to the regions across North Dakota. So hopefully someone wins at your library this year if they haven't won in the past. So again, we really appreciate your involvement. Now, remember, we're going to need you to register like we do every year so we can get you some materials in the mail and we can track who's participating and we can then reach out to all of your families later on thanking them and reminding them to participate and get in their certificates of uh, redemption. So you're going to go out to the Bank of North Dakota's website like you have in previous years. And all the information I'm talking about today is also listed there for you to review and a registration link. Please go out there before May 7th, hopefully soon after this conference is ending or maybe even today, and register as soon as possible so we can get the quantities of materials we need to send to you. Unlike last year, we are going to send you materials again because we understand you're going to be doing more of a hybrid offering, utilizing the app for your summer reading programs as well as families being able to come into your libraries and participate in your summer reading programs. So please go out and register as soon as you can. We're going to be sending you parent cards to go into your materials. We're gonna be sending bookmarks so you can hand those out to people who are participating. We're gonna be sending out posters and we're going to have those redeemable certificates emailed to you so that you can print off any number that you need or just forward it to participants email addresses so they can print it off. Like last year, it's going to be redeemable by both mail and by just going out to a website and redeeming it. We had hundreds of people that did that last year, saving themselves postage and saving us a lot of hassle by entering everything in after the fact. So 
Thank you so much for making sure the certificates get in the hands of everybody participating. Thank you so much for your involvement in helping us build awareness of this important college savings program for residents across the state. And hopefully these incentives bring more people to you to help you get more people involved in your summer reading programs. So on behalf of the Bank of North Dakota and College Save, thank you once again, and I look forward to working with you down the road.